getting a great response every time I pull it out. Like, people yeah. just be gravitating to the new colors, so I think I did pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The music all came about just me being me, uh, just wanting, yearning for something different at the moment. I was doing the clothing, and the clothing was doing very well, and I figured, you know what I'm saying, like with me, I'm always, I need a challenge, man, and I'm intrigued of a challenge, so as I was doing the clothing, out of this nowhere, man, I went to Guitar Center and bought a blue mic, and uh, from there, it was just like, man, called a homie over, like, Kev, yo, I just bought this mic, man, we about to, you know what I'm saying, we about to tap into this music, and, uh, and then and, and in between that time of me doing it, like almost like four and some change now, I feel like within like the last year, um, I could see the growth and the progress. And, um, and like learning, cause see, the thing with music, it's a lot of counterparts to go around being a dope artist or being a successful artist. So it's one thing to learn your craft, to be able to go to the studio and learn how to rap and or learn how to like, you know, have confidence on what you're doing. But the next level after that is like the marketing side of it and the business side of it. And I feel like uh, within like the last year, I definitely been chopping at the blocks with that as far as like understanding the game and the other side of the music. And so yeah, man, it's been growing. And uh, I've been grateful for that because you know, music, uh, once you really get into it, you know, buying a blue mic wasn't as bad, but as I start to keep investing, investing, it, it, it's definitely, it's not cheap, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to everybody that's chasing their dreams with the music because I know it's a big investment, but um, if you study the game, I feel like lately I've been getting a couple good royalty checks that those sacrifices of me making those investments or the mics, the Apollo interfaces is um, it's now coming back and um, it seems like it was worth it. Blow it, all she wanna do is blow money, blow it fast, yeah. All she wanna do is blow money, blow it fast, yeah. I spent some bands on these gold chains. Turned around and spent some bands on the wedding ring. Blow it, blow it. I get a check and then I blow it. Damn, I'm the man in these like streets. I eat the turkey, y'all can have the beef. All my niggas peace. Shout out to the streets. Shipping overseas. Different currencies. Yeah, yeah. I got the game on the leash. Uh. Oh, she want money. My name is Sean. Uh, I own Price Tone Entertainment. This is my studio. Um, didn't always look like this. Um, but I met Go uh, what is it, about four years ago, five years ago, something like that. When I met Go, he was he had a drive, he had a super drive to do music, but not just in music, but in fashion. And I always loved that about him because he, he's an entrepreneur. Whatever he does, he does it himself. He tries to figure it out. And uh, that's something I really admire about him. Always asking questions, always just curious about the industry. Like, always wanted to know, you know, what am I doing on the boards? You know, like, what am I doing here? What's the EQ? What's the compressor? Can we add some more delay? You know, we started getting more into like the logistics of sound. So I started showing him, like, hey, this is like a delay. You know, or this is a reverb, this is what a reverb sounds like, and you know, that's kind of how it started out, just trying to like, you know, get the lingo down, trying to like get on the same page with music. But yeah, I mean, he caught on real fast, and we made some really good records. Yeah, the favorite song that I worked on would, would go was definitely Jacuzzi. But it was also like one of those tracks where I felt like we really got to get dive in deep and get creative with. We didn't have to finish the whole record in like two hours, you know? A lot of times we'll just come in here, we'll get a vibe, we'll record it, it sounds good, go home, maybe come back for a session just to tweak a couple things. But we got to try a lot of new stuff and um, definitely go check it out.
I think the rise of my following really goes back to like consistency and how long I've been doing it. And um, I think, especially now, the time we in right now with COVID going on, I think people have more time to understand and see how much groundwork I done put in because people have more time on their hands to look and see what's really going on. And not only that, I feel like we're living in a time where a lot of people right now are about to start tapping in to have to be creative their own self. So then when that happens, they have to look at their peers or the people that, you know, that's been doing it for a while and see like, dang, like, I think the appreciation starts to happen because it's like people start to understand that it ain't easy, but the, the people that's been consistent, they kind of figured out their way. And so um, that's kind of like, I feel like that's what my following is about because being in the game, damn near 10 years, you kind of feel like, you know, the time has went by so fast, but when you look back at all the moments, you, you kind of understand that it's been a journey, but it's definitely been like a lot of learning and a lot of sacrifices and, and a lot of commitment. And the commitment and the consistency is what's gonna give you growth. I mean, if you have those two things and anything you do and you're willing like to, to have an open mind as you grow, you're gonna get closer to your dream. You know, and that's, I feel like a lot of people that support me at this point, they rooted for me because they know that I haven't wavered. Like I've been like on my path, you know what I'm saying? And that's just as far as just being an artist, staying true to myself, integrity behind what I do, um, not really compromising. Um, and I think, I think the people that truly support me, that's what they rooting for. They rooting for me to kind of get over that, you know what I'm saying, over that, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, I'm grateful for that because those people are the reason why I'm here. Everybody love you when your name is popping and you up. I just want you to love me when I'm down and I'm stuck. Everybody chasing clock, I just want loyalty. They fell in love with money, but she fucking me. I heard your lifestyle ran and shut the fuck up. My name is Joshua Otomewo. I met Gordy in LA County Jail. He became my bunkie. And we both was like on a spiritual, spiritual turnover, getting into the word, and we, we, we connected that way. One of the things that stood out about Gordy when I first met him in jail, um, comparing everyone in there, everyone was like gang members or some involved in some type of crime you know, and more so accustomed to the crime, he kind of stood out just as if I did. We kind of correlated that way. He kind of had a glow, like I just kind of felt like he was a being, like a, a, a good being, and we, we connected that way. He was fighting like, a, a, I'm not sure exactly what it was. I think he had a situation where he was, someone tried to steal his car, and he had to like handle the situation physically, and they tried, you know how the system works, they tried to book him for something more extreme than what he actually did, more so defending himself. So that's kind of how I met him. 18 years old, I was a frail young man. I came into jail 160, 6'2", 160. And one thing that stood out about him, and it weighed on me when my time in jail, was, like I said, his consistency. He stayed in his word. Like Him and along with a few other inmates kind of brought me to being able to read the Bible confidently, you know what I'm saying, and not feel afraid of not understanding. Because he would read it consistently every morning, every night. And then I brought up my weight is because he helped me get my weight up. We used to do push-ups every morning, every night before he caught the train or chain, whatever it's called, before you go to prison. Like we did everything together. Like and that that right there built character in me. It showed me that when you be consistent, you stay calm and you have faith in the God that's in you and, or in, have faith in general and that you just commit to something. Like he was committed to, you know, getting his size right and just getting his mind off of everything that's negative that's in there. So that right there stood out to me the most. And it, like, it correlates to what he's been doing now. He's just consistent. Me and Gordy reconnected after being incarcerated uh, multiple times. And I seen he was starting up his brand, the Urban Trademark, and I was like, wow, because I knew that he was a great person to see him doing something, you know, entrepreneurship-wise and just understanding, like, our crime and the penalty for committing a crime and his record and the felony being involved, I, 
I knew that he would have to take a different approach than what he had previously. Looking back from the time, then when I first met him to now, seeing him, everything has, everything that he's done doesn't surprise me. Because based off how he he uh, responded in jail, he didn't he never seemed down about it. He more so looked was more so thinking forward, like pushing forward, like how he's gonna come out of the situation. And that probably just in his DNA. So seeing him get out to do the things that he's doing, it's just confirmation of who he, who he was when I met him. So I'm not surprised at all.